Hi, my name is Lynn Kimsey, and I am going to give you a little history of Richard M. Bohart, uh, better known as Doc. I was one of his last students before he retired. Dr. Bohart had a very early passion for insects, even in some of his early family photographs. There, they showed him with butterfly nets and so on. He, uh, he and his brother both, his brother George Bohart or Ned, uh, both liked to collect. So his passion for insects started very early. In high school, he and his brother were really into collecting butterflies. You know, and this is the way practically all entomologists seem to start collecting butterflies. And they grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, and he vowed, according to his brother Ned, that he would collect every kind of butterfly in the state. His very first publication as, I guess, uh, after or during graduate school was on twisted wing parasites, the Strepsiptera, where he described his first new species of insect. And this was in 1936. Um, he sort of, his interest in entomology evolved over time. You know, in high school he started with butterflies, and then he did his PhD at UC Berkeley on Strepsiptera. Then for a while he worked at UCLA uh, on sod pests, uh, like white grub and things like this. And then, of course, World War II, he went into the military and he was the first naval entomologist. And he went from butterflies, strepsiptera, and sod pests to mosquitoes, which is kind of an ironic change. After the war, um, his interests shifted to wasps, particularly spacity, humidity, and chrysidity when he ended up at UC Davis. Uh, I, I had made arrangements during the time that I was in the Navy uh, by talking to the people at Berkeley uh, and uh, friends of mine who were on the faculty there and uh, they said, well, why don't you go up to uh, Davis? Uh, we'd, we'd like to hire you there. And um, uh, uh, Professor Usinger or Dr. Usinger, I guess he wasn't professor at that time. He had been teaching at Davis, but he wanted to move to Berkeley, so there was an opening. And I agreed. So I went directly from the Navy to Davis and became an assistant professor here. <coughs> now, during his time at UC Davis, he survived the department moving three times. In 1956, it was a small building over next to Poudre Creek. In 1966, they had moved into Robbins Hall, which was newly constructed. And then, as time went on, more construction, they needed, the entomology department needed more space. And so in 1971, the department moved into Briggs Hall. And, and during all of this, of course, he survived the entomology students. And he had quite a wild and woolly bunch of graduate students uh, that trained under him, uh, including Arnold Menke, Frank Parker, Paul Marsh, Mike Irwin, Steve Bucket. All of these folks went on to big careers in entomology. Uh, Arnold Menke, for example, worked at the Smithsonian uh, for USDA. Uh, Paul Marsh, similar. Frank Parker, similar route. Mike Irwin and Steve Bucket. Yeah, all went on to long careers in entomology. And of course, at the same time, he was dealing with the uh, <clears throat> strong personalities of three very different uh, collection managers for the, the museum. A.T. McClay was the first, um, and after he retired, Bob Schuster, R.O. Schuster, took his place. And Bob was there until Steve Hayden came in in the 90s. And Doc published numerous books and more than 280 journal articles. He did the Chrysidid Wasps of the World, the Seasid Wasps of the World, Mosquitoes of California, several editions, and uh, many other topics. I did take a course in medical entomology. And I did learn that there were mosquitoes and some very interesting mosquitoes, but I, I remember telling somebody, I'm never going to be working with mosquitoes. I just don't care much that, that much for them. So when I went in the Navy then, in, um, 
1942, uh, one of the first things that I was assigned to do was to make a collection of mosquitoes uh, in eastern United States, which I did. And uh, I began to get so interested in them that I really uh, got rather deeply into it. And as a result, uh, from 1942 to 1942, six or more, I, pub I began to publish uh, rather extensively in mosquitoes, described many new species. Uh, did, uh, I did work on, of different kinds in relating to disease carrying mosquitoes. And I found that mosquitoes were extremely interesting, considering the fact that I had said I was never going to be working with them. I, I became one of the world, you know, there weren't too many world authorities on mosquitoes, but I became one of them. And, uh, not perhaps the most eminent one, but nevertheless, uh, I did at that time. Uh, have, it was about the time, it was somewhat later that I decided, well, I've got to, I have to make a decision. Am I going to continue work with mosquitoes or am I going to work on wasps? Because I had been, all that time, I'd been working with wasps. So I decided I'll work on wasps. And so, uh, although people still give me mosquitoes to identify and to ask questions on them, why? I'm a wasp man. In the 1970s, and I was a student, an undergraduate at the time, we all knew that he ate undergraduates for breakfast. He terrified us. In class, we did everything he said because we knew that we would be in big trouble. But you know, the funny thing was, he was an incredibly generous person. And if anyone needed help or even financial assistance, he was there. Quite a striking contrast, you know, but oh, we were so scared of him in class. <laughs> it was pretty funny. And he taught field courses, and those were an adventure too, and always well managed. He taught at 4, 49, and 109. Now, 49 was actually taught out of um, Los Angeles, and then I think shifted up to Sage Chan Creek, and then 109 was taught at Sage Chan Creek. And as you can see from this picture from the 1970s, this was the decade of hair. And so uh, many of the students pictured here went on to careers in entomology. And then the women in his life. His first wife, Margaret, um, died a few years before he, or after he retired. Um, then there's, of course, there's Ms. Bo, who's the most terrifying cat I ever met. And then finally, his last wife, Elizabeth Arias. And there they are in the picture celebrating his 92nd birthday. Ms. Bo was pretty funny because she didn't like anybody except Doc. And she would set traps. So when he would have students over to his house, she would choose a victim and she'd walk up to them and lie down and roll over, belly up, like she wanted a tummy scratch. Woe to the person who actually did that, because as soon as you reached down to touch her tummy, she shredded you and then ran off at cosmic speeds to the back bedroom. The UC Davis Entomology Museum was his focus, and in 1983, it was done dedicated in his name by Chancellor Meyer, right? So it became the Bohart Museum of Entomology, and it was dedicated in 1994 by Chancellor Vanderhoff. This is a new facility in a new building that had just been constructed. So the original dedication was in Briggs Hall. The new facility is now in the Academic Surge building. And it's been a lot of transformation there, too. Um, the Bar Museum started out in cabinets on the third floor of Briggs Hall. These are, by and large, mostly handmade by R.O. Schuster. Um, not terribly crowded, but as time went on, by 1990, it was absolutely crowded. And, and we really, really needed new space. Thanks to the National Science Foundation and the chancellor at the time, uh, we were given um, new space in the academic search building to house the collection thanks to an NSF grant that purchased the mobile shelving system. We started with, with two boxes, small boxes, they call Schmidt boxes, 
um, with insects in them. And that that was the in the uh, the basic thing in the collection. Uh, that was back in 1946. Six. So <clears throat> one of these uh, had a, a bunch of flies which had been collected by a previous uh, member of the faculty uh, attracted to liver. He had the idea. He had the idea that he was going to become an expert on uh, on flies that are attracted, <laughs> blowflies and things like that. Well. So it was full of those. So the first thing I did, I needed pins, you see, and so I immediately threw all those insects off and saved the pins. Then the other box uh, was full of, uh, of honeybees, which had been uh, uh, kept by one of the honey, one of our apiculturists, and he was no longer using them. So I took all those off the pins and threw them away. So now I had two <laughs> boxes full of pins, and I started the collection. That was in 1946, and from then it grew rather quickly. Now, Dr. Bohart has many species and genera and so on named after him, including a whole family of twisted wing parasites, the Bohartility. Some of the genera named after him are Bohartacus, Bohartia, Bohartilla, Bohartina, <laughs> all in different groups of insects. So these are honorific names. And then the list of species named after him, it's, it's, you just couldn't list all of them. There are literally hundreds of them named after Dr. Bohart. This is a time when Bohart was in the department, we had unrivaled entomologists. They, in the 1940s, it was a fantastic group of people, remained that way for decades. Um, and. All of these people in the pictures, well, pretty much, um, were honorees of the College of Agriculture Award of Distinction. So you've got Harry Lang, you've got Richard Bohart, um, Rob Page, um, several other people um, who received these. Then in 2004, Dr. Bohart was awarded the International Society of Hymenopterists Distinguished Research Medal. And here he is pictured with some of his former students uh, and other associates. It was a terrific honor for a man who really, really contributed enormously to the field of entomology, not just in terms of the research that he did, but the generations of students he created who went on to incredible careers in entomology. All I can say is that Dr. Bohart's contrib contributions will continue on into the future.